Hey, what's up, gym owners? I'm going to start calling these episodes Truck Talk, okay? in the truck with Coach Joe, okay? always on the move. This is like uh, the one piece of free time that I have to myself is, uh, is in the truck. So I want to talk, I want to tell a little story about leadership and, and, and kind of so everyone can visualize the importance of leadership. And as your business grows and scales, okay, leadership becomes more and more important. When it was by myself, I had nobody to lead. I lead my, I lead me, right? I was a leadership team of one. And so every decision only affected me. So it was very easy to be brash. It was very easy to uh, uh, engage. It was very easy to be, you know, exuberant about things because if I got really excited about something, do you want to do this? All right. You know, it was only me, right? I didn't have, it's like, you know, anybody who's married can relate to this. You know, when you're just hankering for some type of food, let's say it's a steak, right? You're dying for steak and you're like, you come home and you're like, Hey honey, let's go out to dinner. Want to go to the steakhouse? Nah, kind of feel like sushi. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Right? So that's, you know, that's kind of how it is, you know, when all of a sudden you partner up, right? Now, Dan's amazing. I love him to death, right? But, you know, we don't agree on everything. And it also there's another opinion involved. Like, hey, maybe we should think of this, you know. He's a little bit, you know, at first I was very, you know, I'm, I'm a very A-type and he's very thoughtful about the clients, the people, things like that. So, you know, things change, right? And all of a sudden you have to develop. It's like being in any relationship, right? It's give and take, right? Dan's got to get some of his. I got to get some of mine, right? And in the end, we meet in the middle and, and, and we live happily ever after, right? That's what, otherwise, we wouldn't have been in business for 10 years together, right? So, you know, and as you scale, things change. But leadership becomes more and more important. The bigger it grows, the more, the more you change, the more you systemize. You would say like, well, once you systemize, don't you need to do less? Absolutely, but you need to lead more, right? And by what I mean by leader leading more is, as you have more employees, you need to make sure that you communicate with them all, right? So like, it's really important to me, I try to have at least one, you know, 10 to 15 minute, you know, casual conversation with every employee every single week, right? And, that, and, and that's like, hey, let's just, I'll sit down at their desk or on the gym floor, and it's mostly like, how's life, right? Like, what's going on? How you feeling? Everything good, right? Uh, you know, how does how 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 are things coming along in the morning? Has, has what's the vibe been like here at six a.m. Things like that, you know. Uh, you know, what are you up to on the back end? Whatever it might be, you know. And just try to have a little bit of a conversation. Got to get the bead uh, of what they're feeling and things like that. Try to have a quarterly conversation with every client, every employee, and that's like a, a legit sit down. And it's like, hey, let's go grab a cup of coffee. Or, hey, let's come in my office for a half an hour and chat, and let's just talk a little bit about business, right? So it's gonna be a little like, hey, how do you feel about things? Where are they going? You know, what are you working on? You know, is there anything that I can help you with, right? Or, you know, what projects are you involved in? You know, is, is there converse? Is there uh, communication issues? Is are you are you are you happy with the work that you're doing right now? Hey, maybe you're working on a project. Do you like that? Is that something that you really can see yourself? doing a little bit more of things like that right it's really important and then you know your team meetings your you know giving people a clear outline as to what they're doing with their career and where they're going right and that's something even I could work on better because you know I get super busy and it's like man I really have to map out zero to you know infinity you know and our goal you know this year is to map out a, a super clear path from internship to head coach, right? Now, obviously, we got a head coach in place, so nobody's getting that job until until Big Mike decides to pass the torch one day. Hopefully, never, Big Mike, if you're listening. And, and uh, you know, and, and that clear path, and it's like all the steps in between. So it's like, you know, intern, part-time coach, associate coach, full-time coach, okay? You know, lead coach, and, and, and so on, and what that means in terms of responsibility and duties, pay, you know, benefits, all that type of stuff, right? So, because obviously, someone like Mike, who's been here for 10 years and is our head of strength and conditioning, should should be being compensated more than someone who just started a year ago, and, and obviously, that comes with more responsibilities as well, right? So, it's my job to make sure that I clearly lay out those duties and responsibilities and accountabilities, that people are showing up to meetings prepared, that people are showing up uh, uh, and doing the work and doing what they're supposed to, and that they're leading their individual teams, right? You know, like, like an example, like since we're talking about Mike, it's like, you know, Mike runs the trainer meetings. Mike, Mike runs 
the the education. Mike is in charge of making sure that the junior coaches are getting up to speed and that they're that they're doing their work, that they're getting educated, that they're learning all processes and procedures and things like that, right? Just as it's Phoebe's job to make sure that that the admin staff is doing what they're supposed to be doing and that they're learning new processes and procedures and that they're getting their sales training and they're they know the verbiage and everything there, right? And then I meet with them and then of course I meet with the Every, I meet with everybody. That's the key, right? So it's not like me and Dan just have a meeting and I expect everybody to do what they're supposed to do. I have to have a meeting with Dan. Then I have a meeting with all my department heads. And then eventually I wind up having little meetings with everybody, right? Even even our part-time, you know, I got two high school uh, boys training, uh, you know, working with us now at the front desk. Two great kids, right? I'm going to have us next week. We're having a sales review. Boys, if you're listening, you better get your shit together, Okay. And we're gonna have a sales review next week. I'm gonna spend two hours with these young bucks, you know, teaching them up and giving them my perspective, 20, 20 plus years of perspective on, on, on speaking to clients. And, and you know, they're 17, 18 years old, talking to 40 to 60 year olds about their memberships, about health and fitness and getting people on the phone and having to convert people to a gym tour and stuff like that. You know, no matter who it is, it's an important role. We're a small company, every person is important. So it's up to me to lead. Here's why leadership is important. Because if you don't have leadership, things start to fall apart quickly. And you have a broken culture, okay? Where things just happen and people, get, let's call it, get away with things, right? And it's human nature to push the boundaries of what you can get away with. We started that when we were one years old, right? When mom and dad, when you were a little kid and you started crying and mom and dad picked you up every time that you started whining, right? And they said, oh, wait, hold on. If I cry, they pick me up and comfort me. And I get a baba and a binky. Aha, aha genius right and we, and we do that throughout the rest of our lives so it's like you know whether it's cleaning up after yourselves in the bathroom and doing little things or taking out the garbage right leaving food in the refrigerator that stinks for weeks all those little things then you say well man uh, you're gonna nitpick all that stuff absolutely okay because if you let one thing go then they all go right so the example that I can give you is if you let your trainers you know sit on their phones while they're training people okay then they're gonna assume that that's the norm and then everybody's gonna do that and then I have junior coaches doing it you know and I could easily say well you know it's big Mike he's been here for 10 years nobody cares he's, he's the best coach we got and he and he's you know paying attention all the time but if he does it everyone does it you got to leave from the top you got to leave from the top you got it's super important that you're, you're conscious of all those little things company morale and, and and behavior between between employees right that's something I'm huge on. I'm dealing with a problem right now with a friend who is, you know, in a sense being workplace bullied, right? And and having a real issue. And and that company's gonna wind up losing two people. You're gonna lose the good person that's getting bullied because they're pissed off and nothing's getting done and they feel, you know, uh, dejected from the company. And, and eventually you're gonna have to wind up firing that other person because they're an asshole. And it's gonna get to a point where they're gonna piss, you know, two or three people off. You might wind up losing multiple employees and then and because you didn't do nothing, eventually you, that frustration is going to come to me, the leader, right? Or you, the leader. And, and that's going to be a real problem. So, you know, the little poking and jabbing, picking on employees, that shit doesn't fly. You be nice to each other. You be kind to each other. You help each other, right? Do we break chops? Of course. Do, do we joke around with each other? Of course, right? We're a bunch of guys and, and Simone and Phoebe, right? And, and, and the ladies up front. So it's like, you know, but eventually, you know, that stuff gets old, right? So jabbing and poking leads to frustration and animosity. Animosity leads to, you know, anger and, and, and dissent. Anger and dissent leads to a broken culture and, and somebody getting pissed off. And next thing you know, you got two of your, you know, employees roll around on the floor wanting to beat the shit out of each other, right? And you're like, wow, why did that happen, right? And they're like, what do you mean, how did you not know that was gonna happen, right? Like, you gotta be, you gotta be on top of that stuff, so. Always having conversations, always asking people how they're feeling, always asking if there's anything that you could do to help, right? Always, always leading by example, right? Always, you know, if I want my guys to be punctual and on time, you bet your ass I gotta be punctual and on time. If I want people off the phones, you gotta be off the phones. If I want people to show up to meetings on time, you gotta show up to the meeting on time, all right? So it, it, it is lead or die in business. Okay, so if there's no leadership, there's no structure, there's no culture, there's no accountability, you will not survive. Go back to being a single operation, worry about yourself, and just be like a guru in a box and train. If you want to scale, you have to lead. That's the end of the story. Happy Thursday, gang.